Today we have one of the most beautiful machines that Apple ever released. This is the Power Mac G4 with mirror drive doors, often affectionately referred to as the MDD. And unlike some of Apple's other machines from this era, it doesn't sacrifice function for form. The MDD was built as a no compromises G4 powerhouse and it was the last of its breed. But though the dual 1.25 G4s made this an absolute monster in 2002, its power was soon eclipsed by the G5. Well, we're not gonna stand for that, so today, let's install the most extreme possible G4 processor upgrade, max this thing out, and see just how much performance we can get. And then we'll do the ultimate test. How well can this 19 year old work of art play Minecraft? So stay tuned. And if you enjoy taking Apple's most beautiful creations and mercilessly mutating them to unreasonable levels of performance, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We have many more builds like this in the pipeline, including even older and rarer machines. Released in the summer of 2002, the G4 MDD was the final machine that Apple released in their greatest form factor ever. The boldly styled fold-out tower first introduced with the blue and white G3 a 1999 machine that heralded the end of boring beige boxes. And this machine really is a beautiful window into a different era at Apple. The fold-out door gave easy access to the machine's internals, allowing users to easily add PCI cards, swap out the AGP graphics card, swap the IDE drives out, and even the CPU, which is on a daughter card. That's a pretty far cry from today Apple's aggressively closed systems and opposition to right to repair. Significantly faster than the Quicksilver models it replaced, the MDD was based on the same architecture as the G4 XServe, and all models came with dual CPUs. The lower end model pairing 867 MHz G4s with PC2100 memory on a 133 MHz bus, and the higher end models spec'd at 1, 1.25 or 1.42 gigahertz with a faster 167 megahertz bus and PC2700 memory. They were also the fastest machines capable of natively booting into Mac OS 9, at least officially, which led to a pretty interesting quirk of the series. Although the MDD was discontinued in June 2002, it was actually brought back due to demand from users who needed native macOS 9 capability, and it was then phased out again in June 2004. Okay, now before we dig into this thing, I'd like to say a quick thanks to today's sponsor, NordVPN, who I've actually been a customer of for many years now. On this channel, we're all about the computers of yesteryear. Back when the internet was new, strangers didn't get a continuous feed of our personal information, and nobody was watching every move that we made online. But today, that's no longer the case. Gigantic, faceless corporations store the minutia of our lives in databases. That's why using a secure and reliable VPN service is so important. So I'm proud to say that NordVPN, my personal VPN of choice, is sponsoring today's video along with a special offer at nordvpn.com slash action retro. Not only has NordVPN been around forever, but their mix of features has continuously been second to none. For example, their diskless servers don't store data or configurations on site. You can route your traffic through two NordVPN servers to double your encryption. And Nordlinks is a next gen VPN tunneling solution based on the popular WireGuard protocol for extremely fast VPN connections. That's why I personally chose NordVPN long before I ever had a YouTube channel and why I continue to recommend them. So go to nordvpn.com slash actionretro and use code actionretro to get a two-year plan with a bonus gift and a huge discount. So thanks again to NordVPN, and now back to our mirrored monstrosity. So the machine we're working on today is a 1.25 gigahertz Firewire 800 model, which should have 256 megs of RAM in it, and the original 80 gigabyte hard drive. It's in pretty good cosmetic condition with a few scratches and cracks, which are pretty much inevitable on these, but I haven't actually turned it on yet. In fact, this machine literally got here today. 
about an hour before I started filming. You see, I was supposed to film this video weeks ago, but tragedy struck. I had a very special MDD donated by friend of the channel, Megan Alnico, who shipped it here from Portland, which was then subsequently lost by FedEx at the very last moment. And if you're thinking, hey, where do I know the name Megan Alnico from? then we should probably be friends because it seems that we're both fans of deep sci-fi and space operas. Megan is the author of Chroma Space Conscript, an excellent sci-fi novel that I enjoyed very much and which also released in a really interesting way. In addition to being available on Amazon for Kindle, she also released it as a bootable PCAT compatible DOS disk image. And I'll link both the Kindle version and the DOS version below. And if you're a fan of deep sci-fi, I think you'll really enjoy it. So I've been sitting on the processor upgrade and all of the other stuff that I need to really max out this machine for quite a while. But FedEx just wasn't any help trying to find what happened to Megan's MDD. So as disappointed as I was, I found a new one on eBay and I got super lucky. The seller accepted my offer on this perfect spec. So let's power this thing up for the first time and see if it works. So here we go. So these have kind of a reputation as the wind tunnel Mac because they're so loud, but this one doesn't seem to be very loud at all. Though I already dug out this beefy 12 volt 120 millimeter knock to a fan, so maybe we'll install this anyway. Okay, now let's talk about this processor upgrade because it's incredibly special and it's not something that you could just go out and buy. This dual 2 gigahertz card was custom built by Herd on the 68K MLA forums. He's the same one who built the single 2 gigahertz processor that upgraded my G4 Cube and turned it into a Minecraft playing powerhouse, at least compared to what it was originally. Now, this upgrade isn't quite as drastic as the cubes. The cube upgrade took it from 400 megahertz to two gigahertz, which is a mind bending transformation. Here, we're going from a dual 1.25 to dual two gigahertz. Nowhere near the same percentage jump in raw processing power, but the end result is going to be just about the fastest possible G4 machine. But this isn't just a megahertz bump. These G4s, are 7448s, released in June 2005, and they're much more modern G4 processors than the MDD's original 7455s. And though we're running them at 2 gigahertz here, I've read that these can easily go up to at least 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, let's max out the RAM and add an SSD, and then we'll run some benchmarks before we install the new processors. And just for fun, our friend Steve from MacAD4 offered to run the same benchmarks on his dual G5 2 gigahertz so we can see how these more modern G4s stack up against G5s running at the same speed. Okay, so first, obviously, we'll get this old PRAM battery out of here since it's definitely dead. And we have our brand new one right here. But let's install the memory, which is just hiding right here on the other side of the video card. And we'll take out the 256 module, and then we'll install four 512 modules for a nice, reasonable two gigs of RAM. Next, we'll get rid of this old spinning hard drive, which comes out extremely easily in fact, the whole bracket slides out with just one plastic tab over here. You push that down and pull it straight back. And we're going to replace it with this 240 gig SATA SSD using this SATA to IDE adapter. Okay, and now we'll have to see how we can fit this tiny SSD in this gigantic space. I guess I could 3D print an adapter, but for now, I think we'll just stick it in there. All right, so that fit in there pretty well. I've got one screw in there nice and tight and the other screw kind of just hooked in on the edge there, but seems pretty sturdy and this adapter fits perfectly. So 
yeah, let's install this. Okay, fits in there pretty well, not as solid as I would hope. So I'll probably try to figure out a 3D printed solution for this, but for now, let's close this up and see if it boots, and if so, install Mac OS X on here. Okay, so it didn't seem to want to play nice with my external hard drive, so I popped in my completely legitimate copy of Mac OS X 4 Tiger. So let's boot from that. Alright, and it does see our SSD here, 223 gigabyte A data SU635. <laughs> so that's a good sign. Let's uh let's format this. And then I guess we're going with Tiger. All right, installation was successful and we are booted into Tiger. And let's just make sure we can see the full two gigs of RAM. Yep, we can. So dual 1.25 PowerPC G4 and two gigs of DDR SD RAM. Okay, so I've redone the hard drive on here and I decided to go with a two partition strategy. And I was really back and forth on whether I wanted to use Leopard or stick with Tiger, but in the end I decided to go with Leopard because that gives me the option of a little bit newer software and it runs Minecraft better. Now, the problem with Leopard, of course, is that we don't have a classic environment. So I decided to do a classic partition and install OS 9 there, which I did run into a bit of a problem. You see, the Mirror Drive Doors was the last Mac able to natively boot Mac OS 9, but not all of them. The very last versions, the Firewire 800 version, it, it was not able to boot Mac OS 9 natively, but people hacked the installer with a ROM from the older version of the mirror drive doors, and that's what I have here, Mac OS 922 for unsupported G4s, which includes that hacked ROM, and let me install Mac OS 9, no problem. The only one slight caveat is that to boot into Mac OS 9, I can't just go into System Preferences Startup Disk because it doesn't show up because OS 10 knows that this is not a Mac OS 9 compatible machine. So what I actually have to do is restart the machine and hold down Option. And the bootloader sees the classic partition just fine, so not really that big of a deal, just a slight loss of convenience. And once we're in Mac OS 9, there seems to be no loss in functionality. The drives work, the sound works, and even the Firewire 800 port works, it's just detected as a Firewire 400 port. But yeah, <laughs> this is kind of the perfect best of both worlds machine now. We have our classic partition, which is six gigs, and then the rest of the hard drive, 200 something gigs, is in the leopard partition. But before we install our crazy upgrade, I do wanna run some benchmarks. And I thought it would be funny to actually run MacBench 4.0, since we do have Mac OS 9 here, and pretty much all of the machines that we've been upgrading have been much older than this machine. So let's see just how much a dual G4 1.2 gigahertz trounces a PowerPC 601 60 megahertz. And I assume it will be by a lot. All right, so results are in and yeah, we're just uh, a little bit better than the 60 megahertz 601. So with the PowerMac 6100 as the baseline score of 100, our processor is 3302. So let me save this as 1.2 gigahertz. Okay, now here on the Leopard side, we're gonna run Geekbench, but first I do just want to change the dock. So the dock in Leopard is this 3D kind of dock, which is kind of cool, I guess, but I prefer the flat look. So using this OS 10 daily article from 2007, all we have to do is pop in this defaults right to the terminal. 
Then a quick kill all doc. And there we go. Much better. All right, so now let's run some Geekbench. So this is Geekbench 2.2.7, which is what I generally go with on OS X machines. And the demo version is limited to 32-bit, which is fine because this is a 32-bit machine. Let's run the benchmarks. All right, we got a Geekbench score of 1100. That's pretty good. But let's tear this machine open again, install the new processor and maybe a couple of other tweaks and see just how much we can beat this score by. All right, let's get back inside here. And then there's two things I wanna do now in addition to just the processor here. I want to first, I printed out a bracket for the hard drive, even though my printer evidently needs a little bit of a calibration, but this should hold the hard drive in place much more securely. And then I also want to stick in this gigantic knock to a fan, which I think will be a lot quieter and also provide a lot better cooling for the system. All right, there's our old beefy black fan. All right, well, I have to say that is nice and clean and this drive isn't going anywhere. And our adapter fits on there nice and snugly. So yeah, let's toss this back into the machine. Well, as is par for the course for this channel, I was so excited to install the processor, I completely forgot to install all the software that we need. So luckily I remembered before I went to try the machine with the new processor because I would have been very confused when it didn't work and I would have had to take the processor out. So let's install the Sonnet software, which fortunately is still up on Sonnet's website. And that's gonna update the firmware. And then we also have to put in a code that Herd was kind enough to send me All right, so let's run Sonnet Firmware Updater. Okay, so we actually have to start up the Mac in programming mode, which I have to hold down the power key at boot. So, all right, <laughs> let's try to do that. All right, we got the weird beep and the flashes, so I think we are in programming mode. Your firmware is being updated. Programming successful. All right, next let's open up terminal. And let's put in this code for NVRAM that Herd gave us. All right. New processor card is installed. Now one caveat is that these processors are slightly taller than the original ones. So Herd told me to put some spacers in using washers or something to just give it a, a hair more space than it originally had. Okay, so I've got the heatsink on and actually what I wound up doing was using little springs that I cut in half. These work perfectly. And this is now perfectly contacting the tops of the CPU dies and I've got the thermal compound on there. So I think it's ready to try with our two gigahertz dual processor setup. All right, well, we're all back together and it's time to give this thing a try. What do you think? Is this gonna work? Or did I forget something ridiculous? Put your guess in the comments below. All right, I'm really nervous, but here goes nothing. 
fan spinning up. It chimed. <laughs> hey, look, it's booting. It's booting off the dual two gigahertz. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, I can believe it. I mean, I was extremely careful, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's exciting. All right, I am so unbelievably excited right now. We are booted off of the new processor. And let's just take a look about this Mac. <laughs> Dual two gigahertz power PC G4 with our two gigs of RAM. I cannot believe it. That is so exciting. Okay, before we run the benchmarks, I do want to just see how this thing does booting into Mac OS 9 because that's a very important feature of having the mirror drive doors. So we'll just restart and hold down option. All right, well, unfortunately it does appear that Mac OS 9.2 has frozen during boot. So I don't know what that's about. All right, we fixed it. After trawling through a couple threads on Mac rumors, I found the solution to our Mac OS 9 booting problems. All I had to do was go under extensions in the system folder and go into multiprocessing. And there was an Apple extension in here and I just had to remove it. And now we boot up in Mac OS 9.2 just fine. So let's run our Mac Bench 4.0 benchmark once again and see how a dual 2.0 gigahertz G4 processor stacks up against a Power Macintosh 6100 60 megahertz. Okay, the results are in and predictably it's hilarious. So using our Power Macintosh 6160 baseline as 100% the dual 2 gigahertz G4 scored a whopping 6,379% in the processor score and 3,708% in the floating point score. Let's see how it compares against the 1.25 gigahertz CPU. <laughs> yeah, well, according to this, it's almost double the performance. So 1.2 gigahertz CPU got 3,302%. And the dual 2.0 got 6,379%. But using MacBench 4.0 is just kind of a joke since we have native Mac OS 9 capability. Let's boot back into Leopard and run some benchmarks that are more appropriate to this system. All right, benchmarks complete. And I can already see we're quite a bit above where we were with the old processor, which... Of course, isn't surprising since it's a much faster and much newer version of the G4. But let's pull up the 1.25 score. Yep. So we went from 1100 to 1633. That is a huge, huge improvement. And I am very happy with that score. That is awesome. All right, so benchmarks are fun and all, but let's do the real test that this whole thing has been about. Let's see how well this plays Minecraft 1.2.5. And of course, this is the special G4 optimized version of Minecraft, which you can find on Macintosh Garden. So this is a pretty old version of Minecraft, and it has a bunch of plugins meant to improve the performance on what's realistically a pretty low powered CPU for running Minecraft. Now the way Minecraft works is interesting in that when you play single player, you're technically running both the client and the server on your computer. And that can definitely impact performance because you're running two bits of software. So to give this the best shot possible, I'm gonna pop into the Action MC server, which is my Minecraft server that is public. You can join at ppc.actionmc.ml and it's running on a Mac mini 3.1 in my living room, but that'll give us the best possible view of the maximum performance that this machine is capable of, at least in terms of FPS. So it looks like we have two people on right now. So <laughs> let's pop in and say hello. All right, so here we are in the server, whoops. 
And as you can see, <laughs> there has been a lot of development in here of a lot of really cool stuff like this titanium PowerBook G4. And uh, it feels like a pretty smooth experience. Let's hit the frame rate button. Yeah, so we're doing in the 20s, 24, 25 FPS, which is totally playable. Now, one thing to note is that playing in windowed mode is actually slower than playing in full screen mode. So we're getting 24 FPS in windowed mode. Let's hit F11 to go full screen and see how much of a difference that makes. All right, so not really making that much of a difference, honestly. We're still in the mid 20s, but perfectly playable. Now let's try something else. I have the video settings set to render distance normal. If you're playing on a lower powered machine, you might want to set this all the way down. And in fact, the default for the G4 optimized version is render distance tiny. So let's see what that does to our frame rate. <laughs> oh my God. All right, so now we're in the 90s, 94, 86. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. And uh, at the view distance of tiny, we get basically a modern computer's frame rate. Although admittedly not the best Minecraft experience but still not too bad. I mean, it's certainly very playable and very impressive for a 19 year old Power Mac G4. Okay, so I am so incredibly excited about this machine. This might just be one of the world's fastest Power Mac G4s. Now, I think we do have a little bit more room to go on the processors themselves, they could technically go faster. And I do know that there are at least some other dual two gigahertz Power Mac G4s out there, but we now have one of them. Now, one question that I get from time to time is, are these kinds of upgrades worth it? And that depends on your definition of worth it. I mean, from a purely pragmatic perspective, we spent a ton of time, effort, and yes, even money, to bring this machine up to about the level of a modern day Chromebook. And you can definitely get a much, much more powerful computer for a fraction of the price of upgrading a cool old machine like this. And in fact, Steve from Mac 4 has sent over the benchmarks he took on his Power Mac G5, and well, he still beat us. That's a 64-bit processor and a much, much faster architecture. And those machines can be had for very little. In fact, I recently gave away a Power Mac G5 locally just because I didn't have room for it anymore. And that computer can run circles around this machine. But we're not done upgrading this yet. In fact, processor speed is only one component of performance. The next upgrade I wanna do on this machine is gonna be a weird one. And it involves this designed for Windows XP G4 7800 with 256 megs of VRAM. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and stick around because this will be very interesting. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more mirror drive door shenanigans like this, please subscribe and thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Chris, Greg, Justin, Sorta Eclectic, Sting124, and Tom, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.